The NYPD has no idea what they've done. This is, this is the worst possible action they could have taken before the anniversary because this is either going to sway in different, this is definitely going to sway in different people. And that's what it boils down to. Everyone who is out there that saw this on TV and said it was no big deal and that we were just goofing around, do you think the NYPD would have destroyed our camp if we were just goofing around, if we weren't some sort of threat to them? We're, we are a health and safety risk. We have doctors and medics in there assessing the situation at all times. If there was any health or safety risk, we would have handled it. We, had our, we have our own fire department. We have our own security team. We have our own medic team, certified EMTs, doctors, and nurses ready to help. Sanitation crews cleaning the park 24-7. They never stop. We were never a health or safety risk, nor were we a fire hazard. Every tent, almost every tent had a fire extinguisher in them. So. Don't believe their lies. We're talking to George, who's locked down in the park right now. Can you tell us how many people are there? This is Amy from Democracy Now, by the way. So, and just say then, uh, tell us everything that is happening. We're recording what you're saying. Just one sec. Go ahead. My name is George Machado. Um, I'm in the park right now. I am in the kitchen right now. The concept around the kitchen is located about maybe 150 people surrounding us in the kitchen. So, ha what's happened with the tents and have people locked arms? Yes, you have locked arms around us in the kitchen. Um, uh, and then there's just like people behind people locked their um, And people locked around and uh, uh, locked their arms in the kitchen and people behind the people locked their arms in the kitchen as well. All right, so now we're right in front of these uh, dump trucks that are uh, taking away protesters' belongings. They've dismantled the tents, and we've seen these lines of police just throwing away the, the uh, belongings of protesters. And now th this one right here in front of us is full to the brim. It's, full, it's uh, packed with protesters' belongings. What's going on? What's going on? The police are beating the people with billy clubs now. We're a chain link. The people are chain locked like this. The cops are beating, beating them with them billy clubs. They're beating them with sticks. They're coming in and they're stabbing at them with poles and beating them with billy clubs. They're and they're, not, they're, they're hitting women, they're hitting, they're hitting children, see. they're hitting everyone. Talk about what you saw. Talk, Talk about, what you about it. Yeah, it's police, it's police abuse. They're abusing the people in there right now. They're abusing their rights. They said, oh, you're subject to arrest, but are you subject to get your head smashed in? Are you subject to get killed? Well, how far are they going to go? How we far are they going to take are you a medic? it? And they do everything we I have is in my tent. Until they they started beating they pick people. It up here. They put in garbage trucks. My property. They the city better reimburse me. I got I got receipts for my property. City better reimburse me. What did they take of yours? What did they take? They took everything me and my wife owned. Everything. My name's Matt. Matt, what's your last name? Baldwin. This is my wife Liz. Where are you from? I'm from Boston. My wife's from Philly. We married and live here. Um, we had trouble getting uh, housing, so we decided to join this. We had a big and work. I couldn't get work, so we couldn't get housing. So, Amy, we're walking through this rubble here of this encampment. We're walking along the encampment. There are hundreds of riot police inside. There was a report of uh, pepper spray. People came out, said that um, some of the people were being beaten, and we're standing in the midst of the encampment rubble. And we're seeing no other journalists here. We're right in front of where police have surrounded the uh, remaining protesters. We're told there's about 200 to 300 inside. They've locked arms, refusing to leave. We can see them now. We're amongst the sanitation workers, and they're taking all of the uh, tents and other paraphernalia into their garbage trucks right now. Although they said that they could come and pick up their tents somewhere else later tomorrow, this doesn't look like this is going to be something that's picked up. Right here is a bookshelf, it looks like, in this rubble. You know, one of the permanent installations at Zuccotti Park has been the People's Free Library, and it has thousands of books. I don't know if this is one of the bookshelves that was the Free Library. Here's somebody's suitcase. So these are the belongings of people, and they've been told to come pick it up at a, uh, at a police site tomorrow. What's going to happen with all this stuff? Where are you taking this stuff? Guess that it's off. Wait, say that again, say that again, say that again. Don't say nothing. You take it to the dump? 
So now here we are walking through. We've made it on to the plaza, and we're approaching this kitchen area, the center of the plaza, where the remaining protesters have locked arms and refusing to leave. I just picked up a book. It's uh, Brave New World, revisited by Aldous Huxley. One of the proudest institutions in the park is the Free Library. It's not clear if this is what it's from. Okay. We wanted to try to talk to a few people that are still locked inside and see what they're saying. Sir, please. All right, you got it, please. Exit. Okay. All right, this way, this way, man. So now we're walking in what used to be uh, the area where the tents were. You can see it's totally clear. There's nothing here anymore. It's all been dismantled. Police are still breaking things down and throwing them into trucks, into garbage bins. But this right here, just, you know, a few hours ago, this is where all these tents were. This is where people were sleeping for nearly two months. The, the two-month anniversary is this Thursday. And now it's all been reduced to rubble. It's uh, people's belongings on the ground. Here's someone's glove. Here's some food. Here's a little box that says uh, to take on the Bank of America logo. It says Bank of No Social Value. And uh, now it's all being taken away. We're on the corner of Zuccotti Park, surrounded by garbage trucks, uh, by police buses, by riot police, and by sanitation workers. They are clearing out this park. Word came out, oh, just around 1 o'clock this morning. People did not have much time. A number of people have handed us this piece of paper, which was the eviction notice, that says notice of requirement to remove property from Zuccotti Park. What it claims is that the people will be able to return in a few hours without tarps and without tents. Uh, but people are locked down right now. Uh, we are being told we have to go across the street. So here we are standing on the southwest corner of the park. As you can see, scores of sanitation workers are dumping the detritus of democracy into their garbage trucks. Um, when we asked what they're doing with them, they said they're bringing it to the dump. And yet in this eviction notice that was served, it says, on behalf of the owner of the property, Brook Brookfield Properties in the city of New York. I wonder, by the way, if Brookfield Properties uh, has a note, you know, the famous line, produce the note if you own this place that has to do with foreclosures. But at the end of this, it says, if you fail to immediately remove your property, we will do so and transport it to the Department of Sanitation parking garage at 650 West 57th Street where you will be able to recover it as of noon today with proper identification. And yet as we look across the street at the scores of sanitation workers who are dumping the property into garbage trucks, it is hard to believe that anyone will be able to recover their belongings. What we're seeing in front of us is democracy's debris.